Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So this is going to be the last um, video I create um, in response to um, the performance of Salat, performance of prayer, the, the um, second principle of Islam, um, pillar of faith, I should say. Um, basically, uh, um, I'm not exactly sure how I wanted to do this. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, talk a little bit about Salat al Juma, um, and then I'll you know work my way around. Um, I have three pages of uh, notes here, and it's like, hmm, where do I go? <laughs> so um, let's talk about Salat al-Juma for the first stuff. Salat al-Juma, um, basically the fourth part of Salat al-Juma is the only uh, um, fard that cannot be uh, done by yourself. You cannot uh, um, perform this uh, uh, prayer by yourself. If, uh, you've, if you cannot make it to the congregational prayer, then, you know, in in the normal, you just follow the normal daily routine and perform the Salat al uh, uh, um, in the case, in the instead of uh, the the Friday congregational prayer. However, if you can make it to the fr the congregational prayer, it's very important that you do. Uh, it's um, that's one of the most important uh, um, aspects. This is where basically what would happen at the um, for those who have never been to a, a Juma or a Friday prayer is that basically what happens is that the Imam, uh, the leader, the the, the priest, if you will, uh, he gives a, um, a, a khutbah or a message to the people, um, and it can be of any, anything um, he decides, um, and basically it's, uh, it's, it should always be in light of the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ and the Qur'an. So uh, it's, a, it's a way to, to um, cause the people to you know, learn about Islam and uh, um, a little bit more better your knowledge. Uh, the, I mean, I always learn something new every, every time I go. Um, you know, or I may even hear the same thing that I've heard before, but it may make better sense the next time because now you've learned other things in, in the middle. Um, so uh, that's uh, something that um, um, is uh, important to be, to, to go, go to. Um, uh, but again, if you can't go to the to the, to the Juma prayer, the Friday congregational prayer, then you would uh, just do, read your regular Zohar prayer. Um, for the Eid prayer, the Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr, basically um, their their format is slightly different. Uh, usually, they um, the mosque usually usually not all the time it depends on the mosque. They usually don't um, uh, do the prayer in the mosque. They usually go somewhere else, um, you know, to a park or something like that um, because everybody is there. And for the um, Eid prayer, even a um, Everyone should be there, um, whether the woman has menstruation or not. She should all, you know, every woman should be there. Every man should be there uh, to those prayer because this is where the largest turnout in the entire community is there, and you know, you share and learn from each other and everything else like that. Um, um, I'm not sure if the women are allowed to pray. I, I, I um, I'll have to research that a little bit more. If someone knows, can you just uh, let me know so it'll save me the time of researching it. But uh, if not, I'll um, look it up and see if the woman can pray uh, even when she's having her menses. Um, but she should be there no matter what. Um, that's that's you know for sure. Um, basically, for the eat prayer, they're offered in uh, two rakats. Um, basically, what would happen is that. Um, in the beginning of the prayer, there's no uh, ikoma or anything like that, the, the um, adhan or anything. The, the imam just goes and you know he says, uh, you know, let's pray, and everybody lands uh, shoulder to shoulder, uh, you know, ankle to ankle, and face towards the Kaaba, and then he says Allahu Akbar, and the, you know, basically the congregation just follows his lead. Um, the the imam would uh, uh, place his hand under the navel, and then after a short interval. Um, he would make three more takbirats, which is basically Allahu Akbar. And again, for each time he says Allahu Akbar, you'd raise your hands and put it, um, um, you'd, you'd let it uh, remain to your, to, to your side um, at the end of each takbir. And then on the third takbir, um, you know, when he says Allahu Akbar, then you'd place your hands uh, um, over, your na over um, the navel. Then uh, basically, you know, you'd just recite re like the regular, you know, um, um, regular prayer, you know, Subhanakallahumma um, wabihamika, you know, that whole bit. And then the Imam re recites uh, Surah Fatiha and then some other chapter of the Quran, um, just like in a regular prayer. Um, you know, you just, you just follow that thing. Um, then in the second rakat, 
the order is reserved. The, the um, Quranic passages are read, and then the Imam would give uh, three more uh, um, takbirs. You know, um, Allahu Akbar, you put it in your hand, over your navel, Allahu Akbar, put it over your navel, Allahu Akbar, put it over your navel. Um, well, to your side, I should say, sorry. And then um, on the fourth, uh, Allahu Akbar, then you go into Ruku. Um, and once the prayer is over, um, the Imam would usually uh, get on a pulpit or something of that sort uh, and deliver um, uh, two khutbahs. Uh, one, um, uh, you know, usually would explain uh, um, the, the. I mean, it really, I, I, I've been to different places where they do different things, but usually it would be about, um, you know, how you dis distribute your, you know, uh, salat, Satkadol Fitter, um, and uh, you know, um, he'll explain the commandments on, on that thing, you know, Zakat and all these other things. And then for Idul Adha, you'll talk about, you know, the sacrifice of the animal. And again, um, you know, some Imams would talk about different things. It depends on um, the person that is there. Um, <clears throat> for Salatul Janaza, um, this one is uh, different. Um, uh, then uh, the regular uh, um, prayer because you're, you're not going into Ruku or any of these uh, other uh, things. Basically what would happen <clears throat> for Salat al-Janazah is that you would recite your intention. And again, in every every prayer, I probably didn't mention, but in every prayer you have the intention that you're going to do this for that prayer or whatever it is. So you recite your intention, um, you know, um, I, it, I have a translation of a, a, an intention here within in Arabic, and I can't read Arabic, so uh, the um, translation goes, um, I intend to offer uh, for Allah the sublime uh, four takbirs of uh, funeral prayer. Allah um, prays for Allah the sublime, the, the blessings of Allah and the apostle in the prayer for this deceased person. I adopt the lead of the Imam with my face turned in the direction of the honored Kaaba. So basically, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, face the Kaaba. There's going to be an Imam in front of you. Um, he's going to, say, you know, um, lead the prayer and everything. So you make an intention. If you can't remember what I just said there, basically, the intention um, that I would say is that, you know, all I intend to perform Salat al Janaza for the deceased. Uh, you know, please um, um, forgive them for whatever wrong they may have done. And uh, you know, I invoke the blessings upon the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And would that be my intention with the lead of the Imam? Allah Akbar. Um, so when the um, uh, Imam um, says, uh, you know, basically uh, Allah Akbar, uh, then you'd re re recite um, Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika wa tabaraka smuka wa ta'ala jaduka wa la ilaha ghayruka. Um, and uh, the translation I gave you before, it's in the, the, the prayer um, um, that I gave. Uh, it's, it's, under my note somewhere, I don't want to have to go search for it. Um, but basically, you recite that, and then um, the Imam would say, Allahu Akbar. Um, and without raising your hands or anything, then you would um, uh, recite the salawat, which is, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim, inna ka hamidu majid. Allahumma barak ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama barak ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim, inna ka hamidu majid. And then <clears throat> the Imam would say, Allahu Akbar, and then you'd recite the um, the, the, the the dua, um, and this dua goes Allahumma gfirli, um, and you have to bear with me here. I'm I'm not uh, I haven't I haven't had this one memorized either. Uh, there's a lot that I have to learn. Like I said, I'm not as uh, scholarly as some of the other brothers out here, but um, uh, just bear with me. So. Allahumma gafirli hayana wa mayatana wa shahidana wa qayibana wa sahira sahirina wa kabirina wa wa zakirina wa untana Allahumma man ahyati ahyaitahu minna fa fa ah ah ahihi ala islam wa wa man tawaffa faitahu minna fatau fatau waffahu 
Al Al Iman. Um, and again, I'm sorry for butchering this. Uh, you know, I don't have it memorized, and uh, you know, I tried my best here to uh, read it to you. Basically, what it translates to is all love, pardon, um, our living and our dead. Uh, the present and the absent, the young and the old, the male and the female, or Allah, he or she, um, to whom thou accordest life, uh, cause him to live in the observation of Islam, um, and he to whom thou givest death, cause him to die in the state of Iman, state of faith. Um, if it is a minor, a, boy, a minor boy, um, the, the following dua, uh, um, and minor is considered, has not re re achieved the age of puberty, okay? Um, once uh, the, the person has reached the age of puberty, they're no longer a minor in Islam. So, just let you know. Um, Allahumma Allahumma Jalhu Lana Artan Wajalhu Lana Lana Jaran wa zuk wa zukran wajalhu ala shayfa'an wa mush mush mushafa mushafan again i'm sorry i, I don't have it memorized uh, otherwise it would have probably been a lot more smooth than that basically it means that um well, I'll make him our forerunner and make him for us a reward and a treasure and make him for us a pleader and accept his pleading um, because again uh, once the, the, the child has not reached the age of puberty um, and he dies um, it's more or less guaranteed that they would enter um, Jannah um, so um, this is you know a, a blessing in disguise so to speak a blessing for them maybe not for the parents and the parents might miss them a lot but for, for them it's definitely a blessing um, and in Islam we should not really uh, grieve over the dead that's also something that uh, um, you know you find a lot of people do this is why we you know um, for going to the cemetery usually they don't take women there because you know women tend to get more emotional than men um, you know like you just like I've gone to um, some um, you know, funerals where Christian people are there, it was a Christian funeral, and the woman would jump into the grave and all these other things, and it's kind of like, you know, because they, 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 they miss their loved ones so much. So this is why women aren't uh, really allowed to go to the grave uh, for the burial. burial. Okay, um, if it was a deceased um, girl, a uh, minor girl, um, it would be, uh, and again, I apologize for butchering this, I'm, you know, learning here. Uh, Allahumma jal jal Allahumma jal jalha lana fartan wa jalha lana ajran wa zukhran wa jalha lana shafi'an wa wa mush mushra mushafa mushafatan and that basically means that Allah make her our forerunner and make her for us a reward and a treasure and make her for us a pleader and accept um, her pleading. Um, after that, basically, um, uh, the um, Imam would say Allahu Akbar um, and then uh, the, basically you would say Asalaamu Alaikum Warahmatullah, Asalaamu Alaikum Warahmatullah. And that would be the end of um, the Salat al Janazah. And it's very important that uh, as Muslims, uh, whenever a, a janaza prayer is being offered, that we make it our duty to be there. Um, you know, even if you know, don't know the person. Uh, in Islam, we're all brothers and sisters. And um, if uh, you know someone passes away, it's important that we all make the extra effort to be there, um, especially if uh, they are part of the Muslim community. Um, you know, for non-Muslims, well, you know. Uh, you can flip a coin and decide, but for Muslims, it's very important that you go. Hundred, uh, there is no doubt about. There shouldn't be any doubts in your mind whether you should go or not. Okay, so that basically covers um, all of the uh, prayers. Ah, oh, the nafil prayers. I should uh, talk about those. There are a lot of uh, various uh, nafil prayers, and they, I, of course, don't know all of them, but uh, I do know uh, um, a few of them. Um, um, <coughs> there is a. Uh, um, Salat al-Ishraq, which basically after the sun has um, 
rise when the sun is you know rise it uh, this uh, this uh, nafil prayer is uh, consists of two to four rakats um, so you can perform this um, you know um, and this again is all you know all optional it's not uh, that you have to do it right um, then there is a uh, slato de doha which basically you would perform um, after ishrak um, but before the, the, the sun crosses, uh, gets to the point where it's at Zenit. So before it gets to that point. So, you, you know, Ishraq till um, that point. Then there's a Salatul Masjid uh, that you perform um, to Rakats when you enter the mosque. And again, um, if you get to the mosque when, during the time it's forbidden for Nafil prayer, you don't pray this. But uh, any other time you do. Um, Salatul Tahajud. Um, this is uh, actually... One of the the, the the Nafil prayer that's actually listed in the Quran, um, it has a lot of benefit to, to it. It's a uh, you know one that you can uh, that is uh, therefore especially for gaining uh, spiritual progress um, and, and so that if you want to reach spiritual heights, um, this is definitely the prayer that uh, you'd want to do. Um, there's Salatul Tarawi, which is uh, basically um, in the month of Ramadan after the Isha prayer, but before winter. There is like uh, it depends on again the, the the school of thought. Some school of thought say it's eight rakat, some say it's twenty. Um, you know, I go with the the, the twenty um, only because you know I think uh, the more that I, I remember my Lord, the the more reward I uh, there is for me. So. Um, Everyone has their own opinion about that, but uh, um, again, uh, it depends on, on the school of thought that you're following. Um, and uh, that one is basically, uh, usually um, for Salat al-Tarawi, the entire Quran is, re is recited from, you know, the first of uh, Ramadan till um, the whatever day uh, before the um, sighting of the moon. Um, the Quran is usually uh, completed um, in Tarawi. Okay, so that's uh, basically that. Then there's um, Salatul Istikhara. Um, basically, uh, that one, whenever you're in doubt about uh, making a decision, this is the prayer that you would uh, perform. Um, Salatul Istikhara. Basically, you read, you re you know, um, you make intention to Allah. All I intend, you know, um, uh, I, I intend to perform, you know, Turaqa Salatul Istikhara with the intention that you help me making the decision, whatever decision it is. Um, like, uh, I'll give you a, a, a little bit of my story, um, here, uh, you know, like my wife and I, we never really met each other until two days before our wedding. Okay. Um, but we talked, I mean, we talked on the phone. She lives in Pakistan and I lived here. Um, and basically what happened is her sister introduced us. Uh, we started talking. I decided that I liked her. She decided she liked me. And before we made the decision to get married, we both performed, um, you know, uh, the, the, this Nafil uh, Prayer Salat al-Istiqada to ask Allah to guide us whether this is the right decision for each other or not. And, um, you know, usually uh, after this prayer, uh, you, you, um, you know, you, when you go to sleep, um, so you, it, it's usually um, done, like right before you go to bed, um, you do this prayer and then, you know, in your sleep, uh, you'll get a you know a dream whether it's good or bad and um, I'm not going to tell you my dream but the point is this thing that uh, that's that's the the, the benefit of um, salat al istiqada so if it any decision that you want to make whether it's for a job or for a relationship or something where your where your mind is wavering on whether the decision is right or not or um, even though you may have a, a decision that you you know this is exactly what you want to do but you just want uh, you know, the blessings of God uh, to say that, okay, this is the right thing to do, then Salat al-Istikhara is basically what you would want to do. Um, that's my suggestion to you. Uh, you can take it or leave it. It's up to you. Um, I'm not, uh, like I said, I'm not a scholar or anything, but uh, that's what, that's my understanding of uh, what it's there for. Um, and uh, again, I've, I've, to me, this is what I do whenever I'm in doubt about something or whether I have a question or anything. Not that I have a doubt about my wife, uh, you know, because I know she'll see this video, right? <laughs> no, I, actually, I'm just kidding. Um, I, you know, truly love my wife and everything. But um, the point is this thing that uh, if if you're in doubt, uh, that's a, a great prayer um, to um, recite. Also, Salat al-Chast is also another one. 
Um, that one is basically recited uh, again um, around the time of Istikada. I mean, there are many other Nafil prayer um, that are there. I have a book somewhere. It's like 33 different Nafil prayers, but I don't have it with me, so I don't uh, want to give you uh, names of prayers that aren't existent. So, um, with that, I end this video. Um, and inshallah, we'll get into the third principle of Islam um, uh, soon. Um, right now, it's getting close to midnight my time, so I'm thinking I might end this uh, videotaping for now. But uh, hopefully, uh, this gives um, some uh, um, insight onto uh, how to perform the prayer and everything else like that. And inshallah, that. Uh, um, you guys will all learn from it, inshallah. I will learn uh, the du'as that uh, I haven't uh, yet memorized. And I apologize to my viewers for not knowing that. Uh, I feel ashamed of myself that um, that I don't have that memorized for you. But, uh, you know, um, Allah knows better. And uh, inshallah, I will uh, learn those soon. So with that, I end this video. And uh, thanks for viewing. Um, and uh, um, uh, I look forward to meeting you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.